Hi there, Tony from Crew AI. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own resume optimization crew to optimize your resume for any other job application you want to apply to. So different jobs usually require you to customize your resume and tailor you to that job description. So this agent does that for you. Uh, you just need to pass in your resume, of course, your job URL and the company name. And it's going to do some extra research on the company to help you even come up with some of the questions you should be asking and know a little bit more about the company as well. So let's go over the diagram architecture here to see what we'll be working on. So first here, this is a, this is you. You don't look like that, but that's just a, uh, my best work on a stick figure. So you submit the data, which is your resume in PDF format. And it could be any other type of format, really docx, for example. But in this case, we're going to be using PDFs. And uh, we have a PDF loader in this case to do that. And then we have job URL. So you can get the job. Once you get to the specific job that you want, copy the URL, and you'll be able to paste that in. And then we have the company name. And this is really for mostly research. Now, if we look at the agents that will be working in this optimization crew, we have the resume analyzer as the first agent. So it does what it says, you know, text in your resume, looks at it, analyzes it, figures out potential places you might need improvement on. And it also adheres to what's recommended for ATS, which is the application tracking system, which is more of like automated system that kind of looks at your resume and determines if you're a match for the role or not. And so you can optimize your resume always to get, so you don't get filtered out. You can filter it in and get an interview. So. To do that, we have a job analyzer here. It's going to get the job from uh, contents from the URLs, create that, and go over it and see, identify some main specific components that we're looking for, and then compare that with your resume, and then suggest some improvements that you should do to your resume, for example. And then we have the company researcher, and it's just going to do research in the company, the latest news, things that you might want to be aware of while you apply to the company, and even come up with some few questions that you should maybe ask during the interview process. And then we have the report generators as well. So these are agents that will generate the resume. So this one will kind of rewrite your resume and point out some things that you should add to your resume. And it's not going to be in PDF format. It's going to be in Markdown. You can always convert that to, to PDF if you want, or go edit it and add if you literally just copy paste what it's already improved on to, to get that. And then we have the report generator here, agent. So it's going to take the, the research that the agent did on the company and also the job and generate a final report for you to be able to read through and figure out some of the things that you need to improve and work on for sure on there. So, and then we have the results of this agents will be optimized resume and that will be specific sections that has been improved. And then we have the final report, which will be the full report of what you need to be working on. So now that we've looked at that, let's go ahead and do the code walkthrough and then run our agent. Now, before we get started, I want to run the agent so that way, because they take a, a while to actually finish. So while I'm talking through it, it's running in the background and we can see the output finally. So the big thing here, I'm using O1 to run this agent. So O1 model, which is the strongest model, arguably, other than DeepSeek at this point. But I'm going to be using O1 to run it. So I'm going to get started and run it to make sure that we, we don't spend a lot of time on it afterwards. But the other cool thing I want to point out is we have some documents that we'll pass in. I have a sample CV here, which I downloaded from Harvard Business School. Um, it's a sample one they have on there. And it's from a random person. I don't know if they're, they're real, but I'm going to use it. It's uh, There's a link to it. And we're going to use this. And this person, let's assume they're trying to apply to McKinsey to be an, an associate. So here's the job description, which I got it from the McKinsey website. And the company is McKinsey, McKinsey and Company. So let's go ahead and run it and see while it runs in the background, we talk about what the code does actually. So career run should kick off the, the agents and start running the process. And when it's done by each section, it's going to output stuff for us in the output folder here so we can track what's happening. So let's walk through the code. So as I've said, let's go through the agents first. So if we go to config, you'll see all the agents that I have instantiated here. And I'm using the YAML file format because that's the most optimal and really modular for us to, to use. And if you come down here, we have, of course, the resume analyzer and they do the analysis, like I mentioned earlier, of your resume. And then we have the company researcher that will do research on the company that you're trying to go to. In this case, it will be McKinsey. And then we have the resume writer is going to write your resume rewrite it at least. And then we have a report generator that's going to generate a report finally for you to be able to consume afterwards and learn stuff from it as well. And on the task side, which is basically a task that will be assigned to the agents that we just instantiated in the YAML file, 
we have analyzed job task, uh, and it's going to be associated with an agent. And then we have optimized resume. We have um, research company task. We have generated resume task. And then we have generate report task as our final agent there. So that's good and all. Now the next thing here, we didn't have any tools for this one because all we're using in this case really, and we go to dot env example file here. We're using model 01. Uh, we're using OpenAI here. Uh, you can use DeepSeek if you have the API keys. Um, you know, feel free to compare the outputs there. And then we have the Serper. This will be doing the web search for us to research the companies that we are talking about. And then if we come to the crew section here, we do have already, and this is where we bring all the crews together and the tasks and combine all of them to be able to form a crew actually. So we are importing all the stuff that we need uh, and, and associating all the tools. And then we have models here. And I'll talk about this in a second once we get to that folder. But in this case here, we have, we instantiate the crew itself and we have a way to pass in the folder, which is which call it we call it knowledge at crew AI. It's a new way for you to pass in knowledge to a crew or even at the agent level. And we are using PDF knowledge source and it's using Docling in the background. So we're passing in the the this the CV that we already attached here in the doc in the knowledge uh, uh, in the knowledge folder. So it will take in the CV for Mohan uh, dot PDF. And then and I've added the link here if you want to go and check out that resume directly and download it yourself. So you have to download it, save it in the knowledge folder, and the crew will automatically pick that up from that folder. So you don't need to add the full path there. And for the agents, we instantiate the agent and we pass in the agent itself and then verbose true, all of course, LLM is 01. And then we pass in the knowledge source here, which is that PDF. We wanted to use that knowledge source to analyze the resume itself, which we passed. So what it does in the background, creates the embeddings, saves it in Chroma, and then the agent is able to analyze that, uh, use that knowledge while it's uh, doing performing the tasks. And then you have the job analyzer, and we're using the scrape website tool. So it's going to scrape that link that we gave it for the job description and get all the context from it. And uh, we get to the another agent here as well. This is also using separate dev tool and it's going to do company research. It's going to go on the web, do some research, and give us the outputs as well. And those are mainly for the agents that we have. And we also have tasks. So we're getting the tasks from the YAML file. And you can see here we have output Pydantic, which is what I'll be talking about, which is the models. So we pass in the model that we want. So for this one, for example, analyze job task, it's job requirements. So what it does with the models here, I'm using Pydantic models to define what I want to extract from the tasks itself. So for example, this one skill score. It's just going to score the skills based on the job description and compare to resume to see how much how you rank based on the job description and give you a score based on that as well. And then we have that's a job match score as well. And then it has a, a lot of uh, segments that you, that you can look at and see the scoring. So this is the scoring uh, skills here, like default factory, and you, you, it will adjust based on some of the components we've added up there. So there's also job requirements, and this will essentially, once you scrape all the job description of which I think the agent is at that stage right now. So it did go here. If you look at the output section here uh, on the terminal, you can see the agent went to McKinsey's website, which is this job description, scraped all the contents from there. You can see all these contents from the McKinsey website. And then that agent, uh, which is a job requirements analyst, is going to use this job requirements base model. And essentially, it's going to go through that entire chunk of scraped content and try to pick out specific elements and fill it in here. So for example, you can see here, we have technical skills. This is going to grab all the technical skills from that final request output that comes in and structure it probably in a pedantic JSON model. So you can see this our final output here. It's already structured it and added all the context. So you can see soft skills. It's added collaboration from the main uh, you know, collaboration, inclusive teamwork, and all that stuff, experience got all the experience from there. So it's essentially getting it and structuring the way we want so that way we can use it down, downstream. It's even getting the base salary over there as well. So that's pretty good. And that's what this model section really, uh, model file has. It has all the Pydantic models that we've defined over here that we will use on each of the agent uh, agents there as well. So the process is still running and I think we have some output. So we have job analysis already in and we have resume, uh, let's see this, resume optimization. Uh, already in. So those are the three ones. There's some more that's going to be still processing while we while we go through this. And the other thing is the main file here. So for inputs, this is where we kick off the crew. So you have the job URL, you're going to pass in the job URL, and then the company name, which is McKinsey and Company. 
you don't need to pass the resume since we already added the knowledge and added it directly to the uh, to the crew itself and to the specific agents that we needed to add. So you can add the knowledge at the agent level and also at the crew level. So I provided for each of the agents that I wanted to have access to the resume, but also I provided it at the crew level so that all the crews essentially have access to that. So you can do one or 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 either really if you want to be very specific. If you have many different files, for example, and different agents that want to use it, you can attach each agent to their specific files uh, or sources in that way. So that's more efficient. Um, so while that's still running as well, let's go ahead and look at the main, which I was talking about here. So this is how you kick it off. You pass it to the to the crew and pass in the inputs, and it's going to kick off the process there. And for the environment variables, this is just an example. I'm not going to show you what my .env file looks like, so because that's secret. That's my API keys. But this is how you would set it up in yours. So you would just rename this, check out the example, .example, just have .env, and then paste in your OpenAI key and the separate API key there as well. And then you can run this example. And let's go to README so I can walk you through this as well. So I have a simple chart here that's generated of the same workflow that I showed you earlier and what it does. And then the installation, you would just clone this repo uh, to your local and then CD into it. And then you would create the virtual environment, which I highly recommend, and then activate it. And then create install. It's going to install all the dependencies that you need automatically from it. And add the, your API keys that you need to add. And then you just create a run, and it's going to start running the process for you. And you, of course, add the resume that you want to add, um, and then add the links if you want to change the the job description and any of the other stuff that you want to change, for example, company and all that. So it, it takes any resume really. So you don't need to be like a specific field. So you can even do software engineering or any other thing. And it will optimize that for you. I'm going to cut it from here and jump to the point where it's completed so we can see the final output. OK, so all the processes are complete. And we have the final results. So this is all the stuff that it's gone through. So let's go ahead and check out all the files. So let's start with the company research one. And this one did some digging and got some output for us. And this is in JSON because we want it in JSON format as well. And this is using the Pydantic output. So it keeps it structured and easy for us to use it downstream as well. And we're going to use it as well that way. And then we also have uh, the job analysis. So this is all the technical skills. This is really reviewing the job itself and figuring out the things that you that, that are in that job description that are important. So for example, technical skills that are required, soft skills, experience requirements, and key responsibilities, education requirements, nice to haves, job titles, um, department, reporting structure, job level, location requirements. And then we have work schedule, travel requirements, compensation, benefits, tools, and technology. So basically, all the stuff that you would essentially need and require. So even having security clearance, for example, for those who are working in the government. So pretty good information here that we could definitely use and do stuff with. And so it also adds the comparison of the job plus your resume to see what, you know, your strengths and gaps and then scoring your, your job there, your, your resume as well. And then score explanations here as well. Now let's go to resume optimized. So this is not in a right structure. So you do Option Shift F on Mac, and you should be structured in JSON properly so you could read it. And this is just content suggestions, and this is for your resume optimization. And it's going through it and identify the section, and then before, after, and then the rationale for why it suggested uh, the after um, right there as well. So pretty good information. And then you have skills, uh, keywords for ATS that you should consider adding to your um, resume there. And then formatting suggestions as well for your resume. And finally, now let's look at the optimized resume and see how it looks like. So this is the optimized resume. And just for reference as well, this is the previous resume. This is the original resume, actually. So it has, this person has a lot of accolades there. And it looks pretty good, if you ask me. So let's go ahead and look at the optimized version. And it's in Markdown, so you can convert this to PDF, however you want, or you can copy and paste it and, and generate a better PDF. Or you can have agents do that as well. That's another extra step that we could do after after this. So we have the contacts, of course, then professional summary. I think this is the section that they added. And then the education there, of course, it didn't change anything there. And then there's key skills, experience. I think it kept the same and just edited some stuff here. The wording and adding the ATS keywords as well. 
and then research experience, uh, selected research, additional information references, which it got from there as well. And then this is more of like a change log. It's explaining, you know, explanation of changes, why it changed, and then what it added there as well. So this is pretty good summary of that resume, optimized resume. And then let's look at the final report that is generated for you. So it's more like an executive report that you can actually go read and see. So overall match score for this resume, you know, to the job is 88%. And then, you know, your profile demonstrates strong alignment with associate role of McKinsey, blah, blah, blah. And then there's quick wins, emphasize your advanced education, of course. So quick wins that you can do to improve your resume right there. And then there's key strengths of your resume. And then areas that you need to improve, there's action items, priority, so refine your resume, prepare targeted examples of collaboration, research di uh, diverse McKinsey practice areas, and all that good stuff. And then job fit score here. So overall match, 88, technical skills, 9.9 soft skills, 0.85. Education is one, which is the highest because they have a PhD or they're working towards a PhD, which makes sense. And then there's industry there and all that good stuff. And then there's skill matches, technical skills, and all that explanation of each of the sections there. And then optimization overview, so key resume improvements that it wants you to improve there. And then you have ATS optimization, so keywords, and then clear, concise bullet points, and then impact metrics as well that you need to add. And then here's the company insights. This is where you did the research in the company. So culture feed analysis and then interview preparation tips for, for the company. And then the key talking points that you can talk about during the interview. So readiness to travel. <laughs> That's something that you maybe list and tell them that you're ready to travel. And then, you know, demonstrate knowledge of recent AI digital transformation and showcase your finance, academic background, support and all that stuff. And then next, high priority, um, you know, update your resume, begin case interview practice. Meet priority, gather specific quantifiable achievements and all that, and then ongoing, maintain strong network. Um, oh, you know, that's always good. And then continue skill development. And then for skill development, it also goes deeper and tells you exactly what you need to do. Familiar yourself with standard strategy frameworks. I don't know what those mean, but they do mean something. Um, and then you have application strategies there as well. Yeah, integrate your updated resume and cover letter targeted to McKinsey consulting, draw up one, finance, all that. So good luck with your application. And then it gives you more of like a quick advice at the bottom as well. So that's just a quick, plain, simple example of how to run these agents and how much you could do for you to improve your resume. And you can build on top of this and add more functionality, add more agents and tasks that you can do even extra things beyond this. You can maybe even clean up the resume to be more clean and convert it to PDF. That's another option there as well. Um, but this is just to show you the power of what you can do with a few lines of code for, for the agents and what you can do today by orchestrating the, the AI agents. Uh, if you want to learn more about how to do this, go to our documentations at docs.crewai.com. And if you're running into any issues and want help and support, go to our forum at community.crewai.com and ask a question or just search there. Maybe somebody already ran into the same problem and found a solution for it. And with that, Goodbye and see you in the next video.